It's been nearly two years since Jacob Buttrip has won on national television. But after a runner-up finish in Saturday's guaranteed rate PBA World Championship, Buttrip and his unique style are right back in the thick of it here at the World Series of Bowling. Will a talented lefty's luck finally change for the better tonight? Let's find out. This is AMF University Lanes in Tampa, Florida, home of the 12th World Series of Bowling. Tonight's the 2021 Chameleon Championship. And here's our lineup. Jacob Buttrip, Sean Maldonado, Jason Stoner, and Zach Weidman. This is low man-out bowling. We start with all four on the TV pair. Low score is done. Same goes with the final three. Low score is out. Then a championship match with the two remaining bowlers. The winner takes home a PBA tour title. This guy won a lot in his great Hall of Fame career 13 times. Randy Peterson. Joined as well by Kimberly Plester throughout the broadcast. I'm Dave Bryan. I love the show here, Randy, tonight. Two bowlers can win their first ever career title. And for Jacob Butcher, a chance for redemption. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he's, he's got off to a great start this year, but his best year on tour was back in 2019 when he won his first ever major, the USBC Masters. But unfortunately, that was his last time on TV winning a title. 2020 was dismal, but he rededicated himself and is off to a great start in 2021. Just days ago, finished second in the World Championship. And in this event, he took down EJ Tackett in the round of eight to make it to the big show. One of the two guys going for their first career title tonight is a big man in Zach Wyman. He's about six foot four. Unusual ball roll, right? Yeah, he's got a unique ball roll. But if you want to root for a dark horse tonight, uh, who can forget Zach Weidman? Remember at the start of the season, the Players' Championship, first time this young man was on TV. He shoots 8.03 for the first three games and almost wins the Central Division. This afternoon, he took down two of the biggest names in the sport, beating Bill O'Neill in the round of 16 and then taking down Kyle Troop in the round of eight to make the TV Finals. It is time, bowling fans, for a prediction from Randy Peterson. So, who wins tonight? Pretty simple. Um, Jacob Buttrip, the only southpaw, the only left-hander. He's going to have the left side of the lane to himself. This pattern gets a little bit tricky. I watched uh, Jacob in the round of eight, and I don't think anybody's beating him tonight. You heard it from Randy. Kimberly now joined by Jacob Buttrip. Thanks, Dave. So, Jacob, devastating loss three nights ago at the World Championship, but at the top of the show, Randy just said that he watched you in the round of eight, and you looked unbeatable. Are you sharing that type of confidence coming into tonight? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's just because of the fact that, like, when you get into these long environments or these long tournaments, um, I just get on that, that throttle and I just try to push as far as I can. What did you learn the other night on that show that you can apply tonight to walk away a success? I definitely learned quite a bit bowling on the TV pair. Um, we obviously used it during qualifying this week on the patterns, but um, I, I'm, I'm the only one on the show right now that has had TV experience. Um, just got to go out there and uh, throw the best shots I can. All right, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Well, he's got the most television experience. Let's put it that way. Uh, so our oil pattern, 39 feet in length, and you're going to see the right-handers use non-reactive or urethane early, and they're going to try to blend that pattern out and push some oil down to create some hold, and then they'll move in and throw reactive resin to it. Jacob bunch of left side of the lane to himself. And it, watching him go through the progressions as his side of the lane started to transition, he made brilliant moves. I mean, he made all the right moves. Bowling out of AMF Mesa Lanes in Mesa, Arizona, Jacob Buttreff. Let's see if that carries over tonight. Another TV appearance for the Super Southpaw from the Southwest, Jacob Buttreff. Back on TV. Trying to overcome that emotional, gut-wrenching break that Tom Doherty got. Saturday at the World Championship on this very TV pair for a major title. Low man out bowling starts right here. Perfect shot for Buttruff. Hey, let me ask you a question, Dave. Do you, sure. think, do you think as a professional bowler, it, it's worse when you need a strike and you get a terrible break, you throw it great, you get a terrible break, or your opponent needs a strike to win and beat you, and he gets a great break. Which one's worse? Probably your opponent getting it. Rolling out of Copperfield Bowl in Houston, Texas, Sean Maldonado. 
because it's out of your hands. Probably your opponent. I, I mean, I think that's. What do you think? You know, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I've been on both sides. Both are tough, right? Sean Maldonado, glad he's on the lanes competing. He has been through the ringer with health issues, as he told us pre match. Bowling out of Strike Force Lanes in Greenfield, Indiana, Zach Weidman. Strike Force Lanes just sounds so appropriate for this young man because he throws a lot of strikes. And he works at the Savage Pro Shop. Which, that's, by the way, is getting a lot of traffic now that he did so well in the regional, right? That's fitting, too. Here he is, the big guy. This is the target. Look at the two pin. Yeah, just a bit wide. Kegling out of ABC Gates Bowl in Gates, New York. Jason Sterner. That's Roch, upstate New York. What do you call it? Rochester. No, did you, did you just call it Roch? You call it Roch if you're from there, or Rochester. You can't say Rochester. You Rochester. You can't say Rochester. No, I've been saying wrong. it wrong for your whole life, for my entire life. Originally from Georgia, but he moved around a bit. As Jason Tolis leaves a 10 pin on his first shot, back on TV looking for a fourth title. Weidman knocks down the spare. That Weidman sure is a nice young man, isn't he? Great to talk to him. You'd met him before at the regional. I never met him. Before. Yeah, I mean, first time. Talked with him before and after, and just a nice kid. The Zach attack or the cardiac kid? He told us his friends back home are calling because you win these really close matches. Remember, it's just the low score out in game one. You don't have to to be the top score. You just don't want to be on the bottom. Arsenal for Jacob. So happy for Sam Cooley, who's been his roommate in Arizona for several months now. Sam unable to go back to Australia because of COVID restrictions. And it meant so much for Jacob to see his buddy win his first career title here last night. Cheetah Championship. Jacob overcoming the loss of his mom, the catcher. The same for Sam. It was emotional all the way around. Mark for Jacob. I'm not sure who was happier, Jacob or Sam, last night. I mean, boy, as soon as we were off the air, Jacob just ran over, gave him a big bear hug. It's pretty pumped up. Maldonado, yes. Arsenal for Weidman. Big guy from Indiana. Yes. And just like I talked about when we did the oil pattern, all three right-handers are using non-reactive. In fact, uh, two of the, of the black balls from Jacob Butcher and Maldonado are not registering on strike track. Turn and like it. Well, hi, but the 6'10. Tom Doherty, thank you. Likes it now. Uh, tripped. <laughs> he says, thanks, Tom Doherty. It's Tom's house here. After winning the world championship, Tom's going to be part of our broadcast tonight. And one thing Jason Sterner loves to do is throw it hard. Admitted to us in our interviews this afternoon that, you know, one of the things he's been working on is trying to slow his ball speed down when he has to. Six ten for Maldonado out of Houston. Big change with his game. Thumb out. Yeah, I was going to use that as a tease going to break. But, oh darn. Yeah, but hey, it's okay. We'll, we'll figure something else out. But you're right. Sean Maldonado last October took his thumb out of it and said, you know what, I'm going to commit to this. And uh, you know, Dave, some of the things he said were, well, you know, I'm still kind of 
learning some of the tricks and this that, and the other but he said it makes his bowling ball so much cleaner through the front part of the lane and and uh he said i'm going to commit to it i'm just going to do it full commitment hasn't looked back everything looked just great in january and not to jupiter florida toc players and then severe back injury yeah it was bad severe back injury from Maldonado. We're glad he's here, competing. Left lane, Weidman. Ooh. Oh, Whoa, what a lucky. break. Huge break. Could have been a lot worse, just the four pin up. The big guy who grew up idolizing Wes Malott because he's big, but also Bill O'Neill for his game. So kind of the combination of the two, his two favorites. Bill O'Neill started match play as the top seed. We'll find out in tonight's Flow Bowling highlight recap. But no show for Bill tonight. Four pin for Zach. Lowman is out after this game. Nice cover for Sterner. Well, three players are tied for the la for the lowest game after three frames. So uh, I guess saying that this is fairly tight, an understatement? That'd be an understatement. But I love the low man out bowling format. Arsenal for Maldonado. Kimberly has more on Sean Maldonado's injury. Kimberly. Dave, as you guys mentioned, right before the Players' Championship in January, Sean injured his back while bowling, making him unable to walk for three days. At one point, he feared he wouldn't be able to bowl again. But with twice daily stretching, extra core workouts, and regular trips to the chiropractor, he was able to slowly start walking again and even throwing the ball. But more importantly, as Sean told us, he says his daily calls he got from good friends DJ Archer and Tom Doherty inspired him to get right in the mindset to get back on the lines. Kimberly, it's amazing. Bulging disc, L4, L5. The folks in the hospital said, you're going to be out for a long time. Forget bowling anytime in the near future. Couldn't walk, as Kimberly talked about. It was really a few weeks until he felt right. He said to us he's not thinking too much about the back injury now. But he has changed his release point and how low he is to the ground when the ball's out of his hands. Yeah, less spine tilt trying to take a little bit of pressure off his lower back. That's scary. I mean, you can't walk for a few days, Randy. You know, bad, you, bad, you've been through the ringer physically in this game. Yeah, I mean, bad backs are so debilitating. Um, you, you literally can't do anything. It's hard to breathe. Shot there by Sterner. Slow down. You can hear it. Slow down. His big theme. His nickname is a flash because he is too fast to the foul line on his approach. That's a constant reminder Jason Sterner gives himself on tempo. Undefeated in, match, in uh, his, his matches. Taking out Marshall Kent in the round of eight. Three zip. Thumbs out for Sean Maldonado for the first time in 32 years. He started bowling at age two. The thumb in, it's a big change. Buttra feeling good tonight. Look out, 7-10. That's not so good. Oh, that's fair. Mm. That's what you say as a player, you know, when you leave that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. 7-10 has not been converted on TV since 1991. Yes, they Tucson, Arizona. There it is. How about it? No. This is both. No whiff and miss the seven. It, isn't that interesting how there's been three seven tens made on television in the history of professional bowling on television, and two of them were made in the same year? That's Ma amazing. Mazza made it in 91, yeah. and so did Stayrook. We and, called the big and, four with Walter and, Williams Jr., which is also tough. And they're both left-handed. Well, we might have had it. You never know, Butter, being a lefty. That ball is DOA. It, it's starting to hit like 
it has a bad head cold. <laughs> and it's it's getting kind of towards that time where you start rethinking the urethane. Oh, yes. Now you see the difference there, how the six pin went to the sidewall and cut the 10 out. Jason Sterner's six pin went and laid dead in the gutter. That's the difference between a ball going through the pins correctly and a ball that's hitting flat. 10 pin for Sterner. Jacob Buttrip, Randy's prediction to win this event tonight. Oh, really? Oh, really? You got to rub it in? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, listen, it's only halfway through game, game one. He's the low man right now. Low man is out. Only Long three way advanced. to go, partner. Long way to go. Come back with us in Tampa. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. And by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. All right, Randy, tonight's Flow Bowling Tournament highlight. Let's recap how we got to this point. Yeah, some really good action, starting with Bill O'Neill. And it was Zach Weidman. Bill O'Neill had having trouble getting the ball right. Goes to the nose, leaves a slip. Weidman, this would go five games, though. Weidman strikes to lock it up and advances to the round of eight. His next opponent, that man right there, Kyle Troop. This would also go five games. It would get very emotional. Big shot there to win game four for Kyle Troop. And then here's game five. Come on! Weidman for the win. And there it is. Yeah, but look how gracious Kyle is. Not only in winning, but in defeat as well. EJ Tack would take on Jacob Butra. EJ struggling late. Butra would win three to one. EJ just throwing it brilliantly, but had trouble giving, giving enough room to the right of the pocket and threw a lot of shots through the nose. Butra the highest seed entering match play. The great recap we saw him all the on the 10th seed. Sterner 14 and Zach Weidman the 16th seed. What a road to the TV finals getting by O'Neill and Troop as we saw. And here we are in the low man out opening match. Sean Maldonado overcoming that severe back injury we talked about with Kimberly. He's on top for now. Looked like he made a pretty big move there, Dave. Trying to get away from that traffic that's being created by all that. The sandblasted urethane balls to the right of him. Batra. Those pins had little to no chance against the lefty. He did say to us pre-match that even though it was a painfully difficult break that Tom Doherty got for the major championship here on Saturday, being back on TV so soon after he's comfortable with the center, with the atmosphere, and ready to rock tonight. Sterner left lane. That's high. 3 6 10. Yeah, and that's why Maldonado moved left. How's the young guy going to handle the pressure here, Randy? Right lane, Weidman. That just a seven pin. Yeah, that wasn't that bad. It was just a little late, a little light, but I mean, he's still hanging in there. Doesn't cover, chops instead. 6 10 up for Sterner. That hurts. And he just took over sole possession of the lowest score here in the sixth frame. All right, good cover by Weidman. His theme with us tonight, Randy, I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Who's that? Zach Weidman just loves being here, loves the opportunity to be on TV. 
Didn't you think his some of his expectations were a little on the low side? I think they were. I mean, yeah. They're real modest, right? He was. And then the guy but comes in and bombs him at the uh, regional finals. He's and being pretty sure of himself tonight. Yeah, I mean, he was looking at just like, you know, cash and a couple of events and maybe make the top 30 um, for the uh, world championships. And I mean, he did a heck of a lot better than that. 10 pin for Maldonado. He finished eighth in the world championships to be specific. And obviously here making the show. And I believe that is he not alive in Scorpion tomorrow? I think he might be. A nutrition major at Purdue. Great school, Purdue grad, Big Ten. Bold on the club team there. National doubles title, youth level for Weidman. Cross lane for the 10 for Maldonado, got it. Five top 10 finishes for Maldonado in 2019. Sterner trying for another title. When was his last title? Got by Big West. That was back in yeah, he won 2013. The, he won in Aurora, Illinois, the, the flow bowling event. There you go. You moved in. That was Nicely. 2019. Yep. He won a doubles title in 17. The 2019 title, who did he beat? O'Neill, Simonson, Rash, Belmo, EJ. Yeah. I mean. Murderer's Row. Wow. To get to a championship for Jason Sterner. That's impressive. A little off the mark. A light hit and a two-pin standing for Maldonado. Jason Sterner's last telecast, 2015. Did you say that already? You just did. I did. Okay, good. Been a while. And lost to, to Jonathan Van Hees. He told us he was thrilled to be back under the lights here tonight in Tampa. Buttruff right lane. Yes. Crunch time, Randy. Yeah, it's getting down to it. You're right. And this is where you set up the ninth and tenth frame. Strong, man. Weidman, I believe, is working on a strike. Thank you. Yeah, Weidman can really separate himself from Sterner with a strike here. Deadwood. So somebody will throw a ball down the lane. And, or no, we've got, is that Vinny? I think that's Vinny. It is Vinny. Good work, Vince. Vince Feeler worked, uh, worked with us for many, many years out here on the PBA tour. Great guy, hard worker. Good run, Central Region Championship on TV. On TV here in Tampa tonight. And looking good. 26 years old from Indianapolis, Zach Weidman. Sterner is almost in that must strike situation here in the eighth frame. Works on a strike. Low man is out to the next round. Left lane needs it. Needs a hit of the 10. Does not get a trip 10 pin. It stands. And that is big trouble for Jason Sterner. That's a pretty good shot, too. Maldonado going at 204 clip. Sterner 185, Weidman is 209, and That's a good one. it is. And Jacob Buttress in the two teams. Not over, but getting close. Jason told us a lot of work, time in the gym. Lots of stretching, lower back to try to be as healthy as possible for 2021. A great run here in Tampa yeah. to the Chameleon Show. Told you how well Zach Bold and Jupiter Players Championship Central Region Finals.
Kyle Troop took on the players. Lavoie won the TOC. Doherty won the World Championship. Who wins tonight here in Tampa? Butchoff wants it to be him. Well, Butchoff's going to advance. All he has to do is get pins in the 10th frame. He's moving on. Four bagger for Butchoff late here. Looking good for Weidman. Left lane. Looking, Trip 10, there it goes. Looking real good for Weidman now. Any mark for Weidman in the 10th, he advances. And that's only if Sterner strikes out. Can't get the 10 out. Well, he did. Yeah, he rolled it. Nope. Wow. The base of the pin didn't hit the 10. It was the neck of the pin, and that's the that's the part that usually doesn't do any damage. Any mark from You're Maldonado. Lucky. He'll take a, a strike. Maldonado will advance. Sterner, severe trouble. Yeah, I mean, Sterner's not going to make it. Uh, Weidman. Keep it on the lane. Pins. Sterner's max score now is 194. Randy's pre-show pick, Jacob Buttruff, is the leader. Just saying. Look at that. Maldonado moves way in with reactive resin. You know, they go with that urethane for about a game, two games, and then all of a sudden they create that that shim that the players like to call it, or that hold area down the lane. And then as soon as they see that, they jump inside and throw reactive resin to that spot. Got to set it up, then make your change. Exactly. It's like uh, curling. You know, here comes the puck down the, I don't know anything about the stone. Curling. It's called the stone. That thing. Yeah. It, it looks like a big giant puck. And, and the guys get out there with the broom, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. What are they doing? They're what sweeping. are they doing? Yeah. And they're 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 creating something a path for that stone, for stone to do what they want it to do. That's a great analogy. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Buttruff covers nicely. Wrapping up match one. Low man out. And Sterner's night is going to end here. Zach Weidman can strike out for 239. He'd be the highest score. But the only thing that matters is the low score, and that's going to belong, unfortunately, to Jason Sterner. Shout out to Heather. Upstate New York. In case you want to make sure we got that. Hello out. Everyone watching. Hey. Great run for Jason. Gonna end here. He made some nice shots and just had trouble getting the corner out. And that was kind of the theme all World Series long here in Tampa is trying to get the corners out. The players that were successful in doing that uh, ended up winning. And the ones that weren't, they, they didn't fare well. Doherty, Cooley so far, singles championships. Prather, Anderson, double side. Look at the that. Roth Holman doubles championship. Seven pin here. Yeah, I mean, it was a massive messenger that just went right in front of the, the seven. And again, just that one bad shot where he chopped the spare for Jason Sterner. Really good tournament for Sterner. A lot to be proud of here. Stuck to his game plan. Didn't work out tonight. That shot didn't work out at all, but it's going to be okay. Shai Maldonado is the best scorer.
in the first match. This is no time to get your your nails done. I'm just saying this guy's <laughs> trying to bowl for a title. Uh, He's never won before. He's down there getting a manicure. Perfect shot for Maldonado. Jason Sterner has been knocked out, joined now by Kimberly. So, Jason, you bowled well, but it looked like spares were a premium in this match, and you had to open in the six. What happened? Uh, I feel like my spare ball got a little slimy and um, couldn't get it dry enough and just got a little ahead of myself and, and just missed. Well, uh, this, isn't, this isn't the way you wanted your World Series to end, but you know what? This is a positive. It's great to see you back on the show. So how do you take this momentum and move forward in the 2021 season? Uh, like you said, this was a, it was a good showing. I uh, made some improvements, and now it's uh, kind of solidified itself. So, you know, we can uh, build on that and keep going forward. Well, it was good to see you back on the shows. Right, thanks, Kimberly. Great week here for Jason Sterner from Rochester, New York, who's still alive. Buttriff, Maldonado, and Zach Weidman, the big guy from Indy. The Zach attack, Maldo, each trying for their first title. Buttriff wants to return to the winner's circle. Ready last night. History for Sam Cooley of Australia. First career PBA Tour title, dedicating it to his late mom, Donna. He lost last year. Yes! Yeah, Incredible it, moment. It was a beautiful thing to watch. I mean, his bowling ball was like a wrecking ball going through the pins last night. But the story behind the win and everything that we witnessed le last night with Sam Cooley was beautiful. Doherty, Anderson, Prather, and Cooley have won so far at the 2021 Guaranteed Rate PBA Tour World Series of Bowling. Number 12 here in Tampa, Chameleon to be crowned tonight. And tomorrow, 8 Eastern here, FS1. It's the Scorpion Championship. So game one is complete. Impressive game, certainly, for Maldonado, who is the leader. And Jason Sterner is done. Bowled well this week, but not well enough tonight. I mean, Jason only missed the pocket twice. You know, he missed that one spare. But again, uh, in this building at University Lanes in Tampa, it's all about getting out the corner pins. And for the righties, that's the 10 pin. And Jason left way too many. Kia, Kia playoff point update list. Let's check it out here. Top 16 to the playoffs this year. It was top 24 last year, Randy, but after the U.S. Open April 11th in Reno, we'll be down to 16. Kyle Troop, number one, almost made the show here tonight. Came a little bit short. Second page, Tommy Jones, the Hall of Famer. Number 16, there's Zach Weidman and Jason Belmonte, the sixth time player of the year. Out right now, number 20. How about Tom Doherty here in this building Saturday? The World Championship. What a moment for Tampa Tom, his first career major. Yeah, you know, everybody's going to talk about that 2-8, yes. uh, uh, roll rolling that 2-8. And uh, I, I think they're really going to miss out on the eight beautiful shots that he threw prior to that. And um, it, was, uh, it was pretty incredible to watch. And Tommy, you were acing those shots there leading up to the 10th frame. Ace the first one in the 10th. And then that remarkable break. I've never seen anything like that in major championship competition. Um, you threw it. You watched it. What did you experience? Uh, yeah, it was it was something amazing to watch those pins come out like they did. I, I knew it wasn't my best shot, but like you said, I, the eight before that, I wouldn't change them for the world. So I definitely got a break. I apologize to Jacob for it, but uh, that's the rules of the game. You have to take it when you get it. Pretty quick turnaround for you. The doubles the next day that we saw on FS1. So you didn't have probably a lot of time to celebrate, but I know you wanted family and friends to be here in the building. Couldn't because of COVID, but how have you reached out and celebrated since, Tom? Yeah, I mean, I had hundreds of text messages from some friends. It's it's a shame that we couldn't have fans here because I think the, the roof would have blown off this place when that uh, eight fell into the two like it did. But uh, I was right back at it with the doubles. I really wanted to do a, a better performance than I did. I wanted to give BJ another title, but um, we fell a little short. Andrew and Prather bowled unbelievable, and um, it was it was fun to get back on the lanes right away. Tommy, you're still in the mix for Scorpion, correct? Yeah, yes. Let's uh, talk. I, let's talk about your opening opponent. Oh my goodness! It, 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 I, I've bowled him in match play before, uh, round robin. I've really never bowled him in a head-to-head -head match, Mr. Pete Weber. Um, so uh, he calls me Mr. Doherty. I call him Mr. Weber. So it's going to be a great match, and it's it's a childhood dream of mine to to compete against him. 
Buttruff, Maldonado, Weidman, our left. Tommy, what do you think? How about a prediction? We heard one earlier from Randy. He said Jacob Buttruff will win tonight. What do you say? I totally disagree with Mr. Peterson. Uh, <laughs> I'm Team Maldi all the way. Of course he's you he's, are. He's, he's, oh. Wow, that's going out on a limb. <laughs> he's staying at the house. Uh, I, I gave him my inside information on this pair. I probably have more games on 43 and 44 than anyone else in the world. So uh, Team Maldi all the way. Forget it completely what you guys saw the first game. You're going to see them attack the lanes totally different going forward. And uh, Team Maldo, uh, he's uh, undefeated for a reason. Well, I, I can't really argue with that. I mean, Tom knows university better than – or university lanes – better than any bowler in Tampa um, or maybe in Central Florida for that matter or maybe the state uh, so I think we're gonna have to take Tom's word on it Dave. All right. Tom you're gonna join us in the booth coming up. I can't wait. Look forward to that. It's We've gonna be some fun. experts in the booth with us here at the 12th World Series of Bowling so far on Fox and FS1. Buttrip, Maldonado, Weidman still stand. Who survives? Match two. Let's find out next. The on-lane graphics you see tonight, including the ball tracer, are courtesy of Clutch Bowling. Love me some Clutch. Me too. Hey, speaking of How about clutch, you, Tom? Speaking of Clutch, you know who's in the booth with us? Tom right Doherty's now? here. Oh, man. Man. I wouldn't exactly say Clutch, but uh, we got Tom, the job done. Tom Brady's TB12, so you're TD uh, number one. There you go. <laughs> TD1. TD1. <laughs> Great to have Tom with us. All right, Buttruff. Here we go, guys. Our Old man out bowling. Buttruff gets us started. Second match. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa, hang on. Maybe. Uh, Seven right, stands. On, so, Tom Doherty, when does Buttruff go to the purple ball? He needs to go to the purple ball right now. He threw it uh, a couple shots in the 10th. He went high uh, on the first one, and then, he, and then he went flush. I think he needs to go to it because he's going to start to see some down lane wiggle with that black hammer. Here's your guy, Team Maldi. Yeah. One, one game with urethane, now he jumps in with the reactive. Yeah, this pattern is, is virtually impossible to start with reactive. Um, and the longer you can stay in urethane, the easier you make the pattern. But there's a fine line in uh, staying in it too long because then you lose your right. carry. So most guys will switch after game one. Cross lane here, fellas, for the 10. And Sean Maldonado's got it. Tell us about how serious this back injury was it sounded pretty awful when we talked to him today about it. i mean the the only thing i can say is he literally could not get up off the approach he had to call for help to oh. get off the approach it was that bad so i talked to him that day and it was he was pretty upset Rodman, looking for help on the seven doesn't get it practicing in houston and Went down and couldn't get yeah. up, basically. And, I mean, he was throwing it unbelievable <laughs> before the injury, and we were, you know, it was right before the Players' Championship. So he was, he was very depressed. He wanted to bowl that tournament, obviously. We all did, and uh, it, was, it was a sad, sad situation for a couple weeks there. Is Jacob Buttrick back? That's the question. A lot of pin action, but no seven pin here for Jacob. What do you think of this young man's game? As I asked that, he whips on the seven <laughs> pin, but impressive for Zach Weidman, right? Hey, man, anytime you can shoot 800 your first three games on TV, I don't care how easy they are. Uh, that was pretty impressive, but I don't think he shot any seven pins during those three games. <laughs> Not close. And oh. <laughs> skinny jeans. Again, you don't have to be the high game. You just don't want to be the low game. Low man out. Match two. Maldonado. In action. Trips the seven and down it goes. I mean, that was just some filth right there, that pin action. This is like Tom Doherty action here. Watch this. I mean, he just like can opens the rack and then a late, uh, late kick on that seven. Zach is, is still in that purple hammer, so uh, uh, I think he needs to get out of that right away. Got to go. Got to go. That's the key into this is, is to know when to to get out of it and go to the other thing. And, I mean, you could go from shooting 260, 270 with a urethane to 170 very quickly. Got to know when to hold them, when to fold them. Jacob's going to the purple now. Left lane here, guys. Botroth. Wow. And good.
goes to the purple because it's stronger, right? It has more down lane motion. Yeah. It's a little cleaner through the front. It's a pearl cover, and it's got a little more down lane motion. So it gives him more back end. Correct. Have you counted the text messages? Oh. DMs. The, the little icon stops All of the at hashtags yeah. and It's a lot, right? I mean, yeah. Have you just enjoyed this uh, it was, last couple days? It was, it was awesome. All the love and support I got from so many people, it was, it was, it was great. To do it here of all places where you won, yeah. you said to us the other day, 15 tournaments or so growing up. And... Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text play to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. goodness i'm telling you my girlfriend's been cooking dinner for us all week so obviously she's gonna she's gonna get a little credit for this pin carry because this is this is this is what we do i was i was like <laughs> just getting ready to ask what to get your feet to this guy <laughs> when sean was down and out how did you help lift him up emotionally and keep him going because he said a couple times look I, I'm just gonna give up here I'm not gonna come back for a long time well I had the same injury about 10 years ago mm -hmm. at a bowling tournament so uh, he was able to lean on me a little bit I tried to, to tell him what to expect but when you're going through it it's a lot tougher than uh, than after you've gone through it so hopefully I helped him out a little bit I had to beg and steal to get him down here though he he didn't want to come he was afraid he wasn't gonna be sharp He's been sharp all right. I mean, he just took his thumb out, you know, a few months ago. So yeah. he's he's learning how to throw the ball all over again, and he's already making a show, which is pretty phenomenal. Two. And obviously he's comfortable. He was getting yeah. himself a manicure in between games. So. <laughs> <laughs> and his pin carry is amazing right now. And that three-bagger there had a little bit of everything. This is a big shot for Zach. Go. Needs it, wants it, across the deck, a tap on the 10, but it won't go down. Zach, it's time to get out of that urethane ball and go to reactive, buddy. You think he heard you? Not too far down lane here. The pros are telling Zach to make a change. See if he does. Oh, God. Didn't like it down lane, but it sure worked out fine for him. Typically, when we heard, oh, God, after a player threw a shot, it was in Jupiter. Yeah. <laughs> not here. Zach's asking for another ball now that's actually not on set, so he just yelled at one of the ball reps to go get it. Rookie mistake. Not bringing it on set, you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Remember when Kyle Troop left a spare ball? Maldonado. Yep. Yeah, he's just going to keep making those micro adjustments. As long as he's striking with shots like that, he'll keep tweaking it. He's going to be flushing every shot here pretty quick, but he knows exactly what the lanes are giving him right now. And uh, I, I think Maldonado is going to be uh, putting in cruise control here very shortly. Okay, here's Weidman. Made the change. I think he can throw the purple hammer on the left lane a little bit easier than on the right lane. He he can't throw it again on the right lane. There's they're just a little difference, and there's no way he can strike on the right lane. A break here in Tampa. Halfway home, second match. Low man is done for the night. Who's it going to be? Stay with us to find out. Welcome back, bowling fans, to the 12th World Series of Bowling. Let's go back to 2012 Bowling Journal PBA Scorpion Championship in Vegas. One Tom Doherty got by Jason Sterner, Jason Belmonte, Oscar Palermo, the title match. 200 to 182 for your first title, Tom. Pretty sweet memories. Look at the guy at the top of that list there. World Championship winner, Tom Doherty. Chameleon Championship to be determined tonight. Tomorrow, Scorpion Championship to wrap up the World Series Bowling. And Tom, you're the top seed for match play coming up tomorrow. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. I, I get to bowl Mr. Weber. That's going to be 
a childhood dream come true. I'm looking forward to it. Resuming, low man out bowling. Maldonado looking good. Trouble for Weidman. Buttruff, the man in the middle. Strike track, Randy, powered by Kia. Yeah, take a look at how the players are, are playing this pattern. You see Weidman is still going pretty straight right here. And then Maldonado's moved in with Reactive and really opening up the lane. Jacob Butcher's ju just doing what he does best. And let's take a look at some of this pin action early on by Sean Maldonado. Check that out. Little trip on the seven. Rolls the 10 and then immediately gets flagged for two uh, penalties for unsportsmanlike conduct tripping. I think the, the most important factor there, if you look at that strike track, you can see how accurate Weidman is as opposed to Sean Maldonado with the little couple boards of area, but yet Sean's the one getting all the strikes. His pocket is much bigger with that reactive resin bowling ball. Without question. How about another one? Oh. So is that a football reference then? Yeah, it was either on tripping or, or clipping. Or clipping? Yeah. It's a two-minute minor in hockey. Big Lightning fan, Tom? I mean, come on. Yeah. World yeah. champs. Tampa. Champa Bay. Champa Bay, baby. Keep it, in, keep it in Tampa. Almost the Rays, too. Lost the Rangers Dodgers in the World Series. Yeah, like, <laughs> my boy Mookie, that's okay. If we're going to lose, let's lose to Mookie. He's amazing. Match two. Low man done. Weidman, oh, yes. severe trouble. Sean didn't like it, but caught the side. <laughs> Of the 10 pin for a mark. Butcherth with a four bagger now matching Maldonado's four bagger. This man right here in trouble. Down 40. Ball change. On the right lane. See if it works out, guys. 10 pin. Pretty good shot. Zach is the seventh seed coming up in the round of 16. Match play tomorrow for the Scorpion. Tom, as we talked about, number one, Jacob Buttruff is the second seed for tomorrow. Great bowlers in action tomorrow. Two sessions, round of 16, round of eight, to get to our four bowlers for the show tomorrow night. At 8 Eastern, here on FS1. So, Tom, nobody knows this center better than you do. But what are some of the characteristics that you know about that maybe some of the other players don't? Um, it's just, it's a lot harder to carry than most centers we bowl in. And it's, it's crazy because you see all these deadwoods come flying out, but it's these sideboards and these flat gutters. They're just old, dead, and, and they're, they just don't want to come off the wall. So it's really hard to throw a messenger. You throw a messenger, you've accomplished something here. So... Um, getting the corner pins out is key here, and it, it's a hard, it's a hard center to do it. Well, obviously you're pretty successful uh, during the World Series of Bowling, uh, your win at the win. World Championship. So, what was your secret? What was your key? It was the ball roll to get the ball rolling into the pocket at the right angle. Um, I was able to throw a shiny, weaker ball because of my ball roll where a lot of guys were doing it, the only way they could get their ball to hook was with some surface and some stronger balls, which gave them a bad angle entry. Because of my ball roll, I could throw a shinier ball and I can get it to store a little bit longer, still pick up when I needed to, and go through the pins the right way. You can see that Maldonado keeps inching a little bit to the right, and this time he goes flush and leaves a ring 10 on that right lane. We had Deadwood there in the right lane. That was not a charge relay. Everything cleared out, so everyone still has two re-racks under their name on the scoreboard there. Tom, right now, uh, Weidman's kind of in that, that position that none of us as professional bowlers ever want to see ourselves in, and that's like must strike the rest of the game to have any chance. Right, it's, it's a little different. He's in the eighth frame, so it's a little easier. I, I kind of had that feeling after the second frame yesterday or three days ago. So, um, yeah, it, it takes the pressure off you because you know there's, there's nothing else you can do. There's no, there's no pressure in missing because it's gonna, you're going to lose no matter what. So you just got to keep striking. Sometimes that's easier. Tom Doherty joined us in the booth here. Major champion after winning here on Saturday. The World Championship. Randy Kimberly aboard in Tampa watching Buttruff smoke down the pins in the eighth frame. 
Maldonado has been smooth tonight. I think he's just got to throw it a little bit slower to get it to pick oh up. My God. Didn't like that one. But now, now, oh my God, because yeah. he thought it was way in? It was. And did you see it hit that, that pile of oil? It's just the urethane carry down, right. and that's why we start with urethane to create that. Uh, that's a little more than we, we thought we had, but uh, that's the only reason why we start with urethane. So the more guys that throw urethane at the beginning, the easier this pattern can get. So now if he can figure it out, you just said a little bit slower ball speed to get it come around the corner from Maldonado. His bar reaction looks, or his bar reaction looks great. It looks like he has left and right. He did. If he can dial that in and and figure out a way to carry. Yes, if he would have thrown that ball his normal speed, that would have 2810 there because it wouldn't have hooked. So by keeping it slower, it gives him a little bit more left because the ball has time to pick up and still go forward. Um, and if he's if he's got the right ball in his hand, which I think he do, it won't overhook off the spot to the right. So he might strike a lot in that title match. It looks like it's going to be Jacob. And Maldonado for sure. In fact, it's all but over for Weidman. And Maldonado's shot is looking pretty, pretty tasty right it's, about now. It's exactly what I would want to see if I was in Sean's situation. And on the flip side, Butcherf is following himself, and he's only going to throw urethane, and his shot should get worse. Yeah. Well, that man right there has never won on the PBA Tour. Huh. Asking for a hook and not getting it. And what do you see there, Tom? Yeah, we, we see a ball change coming, I think, in this 10th frame. You see how deep he was there? He was 19. Yeah, he's got to get it to the shot, right. His last shot was 16.8 at the arrows. He's got to get it to the right. Because of the urethane shim that they've created there, he's got to get the ball to the right or it won't hook. Quite a run for the 26-year-old Zach Weidman. Wife, Addy, mother-in-law, back home watching in Indiana. One of his great memories, getting a sign ball from Bill O'Neill, U.S. Open 2010. He still needs a mark. Yep, Maldonado needs a mark. Butcherp is locked with pins. Any good count for Jacob. He's, he's got to throw this slow. Left lane, Maldonado didn't like it. There we go. No, I think he That's loved it. One. Yeah, that was a good one. He wow. said that that was better. You can that see there better. he got okay. it to the right. I wouldn't mind seeing a ball change here, but we'll see if he's... Great nice shot. cover. Great spare, baby. That really was Jacob Buttruff. Did, did Jakey just say that's a guaranteed rate spare? <laughs> I thought he th I thought I heard or just Or a great that. spare. Uh, oh. All right. Great spare. He's working with our sponsors. That's that's savvy. That's that's Maple Moxie, Randy. Is that a ball change? No, that's not a ball change. He's just the same one. He's got to get it to the right, but he's got to do it, and he's got to throw it slow, and he's going to be fine. Do you think he should throw something stronger? No, I think he should throw something weaker. weaker. I think he should go to a symmetric ball. And he is making a ball change right now. He's probably going to go to a bonus pearl, which is a symmetrical ball, to get it to come off that spot a little, a little, uh, yeah. A little sharper? We have a game plan. <laughs> ball rep, coach, motivational. There she is. Tom's got a rooting well, interest what do you, here. Wait, hang on. Boat. What do you do now? I mean, he throws two in the 10th, makes a ball change, and now you're going to change based on that, that last bill shot? Yeah, I think, I think. I think the symmetrical ball will even give him a little bit more left. Even when he struck with the, the Omni Hybrid that was an ASIM, it still went forward and went light. And then when he missed a little bit more left, it went forward in 2A10. I think the symmetrical ball, he can, he can miss a little left and it won't go as forward. It will hook up in that spot. Zach Wyman, guys, will have to continue his first title quest. Do that tomorrow on the Scorpion as the seventh seed in the round of 16 in match play. Trying to make tomorrow night show. He's been very impressive in 2021, and, you know, he just got into that ball too late. Yes, he did. He, he stuck with the purple a little bit too long. And that, think, that's just an experience. Yeah, I think if he, I mean, it, it's hard to get, it's hard to make a ball change, especially on TV. So yeah. uh, if he would have started the match with that game, uh, excuse me, started the game with that ball, it would have been a completely different match. Yeah. Maldonado is now haven't lost a game in this tournament. Right. 
He was high the first game and he was tied for high this game. Right. But now there's the big one. One more game. One more game. Trip on the Pos seven there for Wyman who lost to Tom Smallwood in the Central Regional Finals of the PBA players. Eventually won by Kyle Troop. Weidman out. Buttriff, Maldonado into the title match. Tom, thanks for joining us. It was a blast, guys. Great to have Tommy, you. Thank you, man. Always great to see you. Much Tampa respect Tom. for all you guys, what you do. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Championship match is on the way. Welcome back to the 12th World Series of Bowling here on FS1. Ready for our championship match and ready here, Randy, for the guaranteed rig. Spare of the game. Tenth frame, Jacob Buttram. The two, four, seven, and ten. Get it over the left side of the two pin, cut it into the ten. He does it perfectly. Guaranteed rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. Buttram, Maldonado are through to the championship match. End of the night for Zach Weidman after Jason Turner was knocked out in match one. Overall thoughts, Randy, through two matches. What stands out to you here? Two things. Zach Weidman is your front runner for Rookie of the Year for 2021. And second, uh, Sean Maldonado scares me here in this title match. I think he has created uh, a, a very nice trough or trench to the pocket. You know, he set him up perfectly with urethane to start, and then he moved in with reactive resin, and I think he's built himself a highway to the 1-3. So you're confident in Maldonado's abilities. So is Tom Doherty, clearly, as yeah. our guest analyst a moment ago. But Jacob Buttruff, the southpaw, is looking strong. What about his chances well, in the championship? That was my pick to, to start yeah. the, the uh, telecast, and I'm going to stay with that. Um, but it, he's going to he's going to be really pushed. Remember, Sean Maldonado's never won before. Jacob has all that experience winning seven times. It's going to be very interesting to see in this title match. Uh, Jacob, you never know what you're going to get. He could come out and shoot 260 and just run Maldonado over or it could flip flop and be the other way around. Kimberly joined now by Zach Weidman. Thanks, Dave. So, Zach, let's talk about that match because I know you wanted to do a ball change in the fourth. You didn't have it out there. Someone had to go get it for you. You still struck in the fifth, and you didn't get that ball change till the sixth. But both Tom and Randy thought that you should have switched in the second frame. Why did you decide to stick the one you had? Uh, I probably should have switched to start the game, and I thought the ball I was throwing was really close, so I thought I could make it work but I should have just committed to the ball change. It's the ball that kind of got me there. Um, so I should have just trusted that it would pull through for me one more time, but it was just a little bit late. Well, this is not the end of your World Series of Bowling because you're still on the running for the Scorpion tomorrow. So yep. one, how do you wipe the slate clean to get prepared for that? I'm just gonna go back and try to get some rest. It's been a long day. Um, I bowled five game matches both times, so I'm pretty tired. Um, I'm still gonna try to use some of the confidence I built up today to carry into tomorrow and hopefully make a run again. And now that you have the experience of knowing that if a ball got you here, are you gonna use that oh, moving yeah. forward into the Scorpion? Yeah, out here you have to be quick making ball changes and I just was a little bit late. Well, so far the 2021 season has been absolutely wonderful for you. And you said you just was hoping to make the top 16 and you made a show. You have a chance to make one again tomorrow. And Randy just said that you might be the front runner for the rookie of the year. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, it's something kind of I've thought about, especially after the players and then how I had a good week last week um, for the World Championship. It's something in my mind that I'm just going to try to keep showing up every week and performing well. And how would you describe the World Series of Bowling for you so far? Uh, it's been a dream. Like, I just I was coming in hoping to make a couple cuts and to make a show and finish eighth in the World Championship has been amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, you still have another shot yep. at the Scorpion tomorrow, and maybe we can make that description even better. Yeah. Kimberly, Zach, thanks. Zach, the seventh seed Scorpion in match play coming up in the round of 16. Impressive young man. Great to meet him today. Yeah. You know him from a couple shows back. This guy's got quite a future. Yeah, he really does. I mean, uh, it, it's funny because his style really doesn't jump out at you, but his ball roll is unique, and he knows how to bowl, and he's proven that. Um, he's really caught the attention of a lot of players out on this tour. 
Major League Baseball is coming back, Rand. I know you're excited. Yeah, man, I, fan. I'm a big Dodger fan. You know yeah, that. You can't wait. Saturday, April 3rd, MLB is back as the Braves face Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Then the reigning champion Dodgers take on the Rockies all on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Championship match is on the way from here in Tampa. Will Sean Mabinato win his first career PBA title, or will Jacob Buttrip do it again? Look in tonight for title number eight. Getting set for the championship match. Buttrip head to head with Maldonado. Lefty versus the two-handed righty from Texas. Kimberly joined out by the finalists. Well, you guys were all even coming into the championship match. You tied that last match. So, Jacob, I got to ask you, what strategic moves did you make to get you here? So, uh, basically the same move that I've been doing all week is just making spares. You know, they're key no matter what situation you're in, especially this week. Uh, they were definitely lower scoring. So, just kept with the same strategy I did pretty much throughout the whole time I've been out here. Going to make any changes? Um, just go out there and try to do as much striking as I can this round. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Sean, you made a ball change in the 10th. Are you going to stick with that this match? I am. Uh, there was enough urethane thrown down the lane that I feel like um, uh, they're a little bit towards my advantage because I can miss in a little bit. Uh, I, as long as I can keep my ball speed down, I, I think I'm in good shape. Well, you've been in this position before, but you were one win away from walking away as a PBA Tour Titleist tonight. How is the confidence going into this championship match? It's really good. I just need to make the best shots I can. Uh, if I don't strike, just make my spares and... Uh, hopefully I come out with the win. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Kimberly, thanks. Great to hear from the finalists. Randy, as we match them up here with our tail of the tape. Well, I mean, the one that, that really stands out is, you know, the, the amount of titles. Um, Sean Maldonado's got tons of regional titles. He was a Southwest Region Player of the Year in 14 and 15. He won four consecutive regional titles, but he wants a national title. And he's just one game away. Let's Straight track, a, Randy. Yeah, powered by Kia. Yeah, let's take a look and see how much different they're playing. Uh, this this oil pattern, both players uh, left to right. You can see how Sean Maldonado has moved in, but both using the same break point. And then you can see their entry position. I think that's the biggie right there is, is how much different they're playing them at the arrows. So Maldonado crossing a lot more boards, bunch of using urethane, and that's the big difference. And that's the trophy on the line here in Tampa. Title match, PBA Chameleon Championship. At stake, left lane, good start for Maldonado. He might not miss this game. And Maldonado is 11 of 14 on the left lane and only four of 10 on the right lane. And he'll finish this title match on the right lane because that man right there is your number one seed. So he gets choice of starting lane and position. Right lane, first shot, title match. All 10 down for Buttruff. Well, he's really curving it now. So it's going to be a question of whether or not he can get the seven pin out when he's crossing that many boards with that urethane ball. You know, it's real interesting. I, and something I, I wish Tom Doherty was sitting here right now because uh, I'd ask him this question. So you see the right hander start with urethane, mm -hmm. right? And, and then Malden, so as soon as that pushes enough oil down lane, then they jump in with the, the, big, the big stuff, right? And then they start curving it. Bunch of starts with urethane and never, it never get, leaves his hand. He stays with it. All show. Because. But why would, why would it be any different? You know what I mean? Except for the fact that Butchus' rev rate is so high that maybe he doesn't have to. But still, that bowling ball right there is chewing up the front part of the lane and pushing oil down lane. It's working right now, Randy. Only lefty. Here's Maldonado. Two, hook. It sure did. Great ball reaction. All 10 into the pit in that 1-3 pocket. This is the guy who on January 13th has 
We illustrated with Kimberly and with Tom Doherty. Went to the emergency room, had a severe back injury. L4, L5, bulging disc. He was flat on his back for days. Didn't think he would be able to compete at all in Jupiter at the two events. Got to the TOC here in Tampa. Now he's closing in, possibly in his first career title. I mean, Randy, that is a Hollywood script type story for me. Well, it happened when he was practicing, and they literally had to pick him up off of the floor. <laughs> I mean, and, I hate to laugh, but and, that, that's and here just he, incredible. And here he is a couple months later, pulling first first ever title. And remember, it was it was back in October when he finally took his thumb out of the bowling ball for the first time in, in his life. I mean, he's always used that two-handed style, but he always used his thumb with it. Oh boy. Jacob trying to return to the 2019 edition of Jacob Butra faces the dreaded 17. Second one he's left tonight. And you heard him say, oh boy, but this isn't a very good break. I could see maybe just the soft seven, but he leaves the 10 with it. Just the seven, not the 10. Just the Rooks. Last 7 10 back in 91 is still the last. You know who was the first one to on make TV? You know who the first to make a 7-10 on TV was? I don't have it. Who is it? Mark Roth. Mark Roth. A lot of our great stats and numbers are brought to you by Lane Talk. For more information and their great app, go to lanetalk.com. Thank you, guys. Left lane for Buttrip. Wow, that's a lot better. Well, I mean, this is where you become a champion for the first time is when you step up and take advantage of an opening given to you by your opponent. Maldonado's working on three in a row. He could go strike, strike here in the fourth and fifth and increase his lead to 44 pins. Oh. Whoa. Oh, my Drift goodness. More already. What a break that was. That could have been six, and instead it's a strike, and that may have been the biggest break of Sean Maldonado's career right there. Unlock the ultimate fan experience with the all-new PBA Pinsiders program. Gear up with official PBA swag, member-only content, and inside access to our events. Join today at PBA.com. Had a Good. smile after the Dude. break. Left lane. Keeps it rolling. It, exactly what you have to do to win. He takes advantage of the opening, takes advantage of a great break he just got in the fourth, and then follows it up with aces on that last shot. It was perfect. Big lead. There's no gimmies out here on this tour. It is so hard to win out here. This guy is more than capable. Everybody knows he has the talent to win, and yet he has never won on this tour. Buttrip. Looking good in the right lane. Maybe that changes tonight for Sean Maldonado. The candy man, as he's known. You know why I call him the candy man? Because of Candy Maldonado. Because of Candy Maldonado. Mr. Dodger fan. Because he was, I want to say he played the outfield. For it's the a great Dodgers. player, yeah. absolutely. Had a really good career. Well, this candy man's doing well right now. The front five. Buttrift with one re-rack left. Trying to stop the Maldonado train. Well, he better keep striking. Seven wow. pin. Wow. So he goes double, pocket 7-10, double, and just a massive ring and seven on this shot right here. This is pretty good. <laughs> All right. He knows it's tough. That was a great shot with a ring and seven pin. 
And right now, Maldonado is in control with the front five. Champion to be determined. The Chameleon here in Tampa next. Sunday, the best season ever continues on Fox as the NASCAR Cup Series rolls into Atlanta, where every turn is its own test. Catch all the action for the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 at 3 Eastern on Fox and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Strike track, Randy, powered by Kia. Yeah, it's some pretty similar numbers here. I mean, if you look at that, you look at the ball speed. Uh, very similar for both players. And the lines are fairly similar. Maldonado is just about an arrow left of Jacob Butcheriff. But remember, reactive resin on the right, urethane on the left. But the big difference right now is one pocket 710 for Jacob Butcheriff. Fourth frame, big yeah. break, Maldonado. Yeah, this could have been a Greek jerk, big four, and instead it's a trip, four, seven, ten. Four goes down late, but then he aced the next shot and turned it into five in a row. And right now he can increase his lead to 55 with two more strikes in the wow. sixth and seventh. Wow. $10,000 bonus is on the line for a televised 300 game. There have been 30 in PBA Tour history. Chris Fye got one recently in Jupiter. February 7th. Out of commercial. Uh, Look at oh, this. Go. Look at yes. this. Oh, it sure did. Cross the deck and the trip 10. 45 pin lead. The messenger takes care of business. When it's your time, it's your time. We saw Sam Cooley do this last night. Tom Doherty did it Saturday. What a great break. Two great breaks back to back on that right lane. And Sean Maldonado inches closer and closer to capturing his first ever tour title. The bouncing messenger. Whoa, way, way off. There goes a 300 game. Forget about that. How about he gets three? I mean, that was just a whiff. What happened well, there, Randy? Got it too far to the right, and there's oil outside that break point. That's not good. And it was like it hit a sheet of ice. It's not good at all. Buttriff to his seventh frame will be working on a spare. Lot to cover here. Seven pins. Maldonado gets it done. That's a huge spare because right now all he does is lose count. So in other words, if he would have gotten nine, he's lost six pins. If he would have missed that, it would have been like two opens in one frame. So the front six and then three spare. Unusual there for Maldonado. Here is Buttriff. The time is now to return to 2019. Jacob, as he's talked about all week here in Tampa. He was on top of the bowling world. Big strike. That ball there just split the eight and the nine in half. And another beauty for Jacob Buttriff. He's still in it. Maldonado's at 243 right now, and Buttrip can strike out for 245. I think this is the biggest shot of the title match for Buttrip because he has to give Maldonado something to think about. Some pressure has to be applied. Again, you go back to that third frame when he left the pocket 7-10. Huge shot, Buttrip. Nope. No. 2-7. Maldonado, two strikes away, eighth and ninth from capturing his first title. And now he doesn't even need that. He just needs to keep filling frames. Disastrous open late. Butriff in a massive hole against Maldonado, trying to close this thing out for his first title.
That's the way you do it. Sean Maldonado is going to win his very first PBA title. And, and how fitting is it to happen here at the World Series of Bowling? Tom Doherty wins his first major. Prather Anderson win their first doubles title. And last night, Sam Cooley wins his first title. The World Series of Firsts. Just think, three months ago, this guy couldn't walk. Amazing. <laughs> Ten pin up. But he's in great shape here to cruise to victory. Family watching back home in Houston. They got me pretty excited. Finally got me one. Oh, finally got me one. Way to go, Sean Maldonado, the oh, champion on one, the PBA baby. tour. Oh, finally got me one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Time to celebrate, Sean. Jacob Butcher. Second again. A big theme of the World Series of Bowling. You told us tonight. 30 years ago. Going to give it 15 I minutes after me. losing to Tom Doherty. That's for you, baby. Going to be another tough night for Jacob. A great night for Sean Maldonado. Jacob's a resilient kid. He'll bounce back from it. Don't you worry about it. He'll be back. Pretty happy for that guy, though, i got to tell you. Trophy only a couple feet away there, Sean. Woo. Jason Belmonte won this event last year in Centerville, Virginia. Sean Maldonado is going to win it in 2021. What do you think he's contemplating right now on that bench, just waiting to hoist the trophy, Randy? How much champagne he can fill in that thing? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it happens so fast, and then you try to process it, and you're like, I can't believe this, I can't believe this, and then you hoist the trophy, and then you do a couple of interviews, and then it's over. It, it just happens so fast. There's almost no time to enjoy it. Uh, All right, guys. Uh, until you, you get to go home and watch it again on television. Um, but the feeling is indescribable. There's no better feeling than winning. Dolores, Dominic, Mia, SJ, Little Ace, Woo! just born in December. Well, we're celebrating right now in Houston. Because Sean Maldonado, for the first time in his career, is a champion of the PBA Tour. What a moment for Sean. Baby. His back is just fine, don't you worry. Five top ten finishes. 2019 came so close. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning, as always. Thank you, man. Tonight he crosses the finish line here in Tampa, Florida. Sean Maldonado is a champion. Baby girl. I love you, Mia. Dolores, SJ, Ace, Dad, Mom, I love you all. Thank you. Hammer, Brunswick, thanks for believing me, Vice. I can't believe it, man. I finally got me one. I finally got me one, baby. Man. Here comes Tom Doherty. <laughs> Celebrate with him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was awesome. I couldn't even watch, bro. Dude, that was awesome. Oh. I finally got it. Oh, my God. My legs. I can't feel them. Awesome. <laughs> Great job, man. Great bowling. Thank, Thank you, man. Our buddies are celebrating here in Tampa. What a moment. Sean Maldonado, a champion. More on the way from Tampa, Florida. Man. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. 34-year-old from Houston, John Maldonado, a champion of the PBA Tour for the first time in his career. 250-202, he takes down 
the lefty Jacob Buttriff in the championship match and wins the 2021 Chameleon Championship. Fourth and six frames. Well, they went pretty well, Randy, didn't they, for Sean? Uh, yeah, they were. Uh, there, there were some really nice breaks, and Sean was able to capitalize on it and rolls a 10 there. And then, of course, he made some beautiful shots as well. Here's the eighth frame. This pretty much locks it up for him. It was, uh, it was just a great performance. Took advantage of what he had and a couple of bad breaks for Jacob Butcher. Four down, one to go. RP here at the guaranteed rate. PBA Tour, World Series of Bowling 12. Doherty, Anderson, Prather, Cooley, and now Sean Maldonado. Champ so far at the WSOB here in Tampa. We'll hear from the happy winner with Kimberly in a moment. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. And by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. All right, ready? The bracket for the Chameleon Championship here in Tampa, Florida. John Maldonado over Buttrip. Championship match for his first career PBA Tour title, 250 202, Maldo RP had the front six, really never looked back. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that three spare kind of spooked me a little bit, but uh, he, he came back and struck after that. Uh, it was uh, kind of Jacob Buttrip, though, kind of gift wrapping it for him. He unlucky with the pocket 710, doubled after that, left that ring in seven, and then started going through the nose, another open frame, and it was pretty much all over in the eighth frame. The feeling of winning your first title for you was? Unbelievable. I climbed the ladder to win my first title, and um you know it was it it, it was like I, I couldn't believe it. it it was my my fifth year on tour and um of course you know you get kicked around enough and then all of a sudden you have some good things go your way and the feeling is uh, indescribable let's find out how sean feels with kimberly thanks guys so sean i don't think i've ever seen you smile so big as you did back there in that last match nine years pro thousands of matches bold I'm sure you thought of this moment beforehand. How does it measure up? Man, I, I've thought about this moment so many times. I've viewed myself winning every time. I've gotten close a couple of times, and I, I fell short. And uh, it, it's just an un, unbelievable feeling. I was wanting that match to end as fast as possible <laughs> once I had the lead. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I was, I, was start, I was starting to get a little nervous. I'm just like, please, just, finish, just make good shots and finish. And, uh, keep my legs under me, and uh, uh, I came out with the win. Well, you ha you had the French six, and you got a few lucky breaks in there, but you walked away with this trophy. And I know that we talked earlier, and you said that uh, your wife, Dolores, the kids, baby Ace, who was born in December, is at home watching you. What is it you want to say to them? I do this for them now. I wake up every morning doing it for them, so. And if they were here with you right now, what would you say to them? I love them. I love them. And I know that when we spoke earlier in our pre-show interviews, literally just a month and a half ago, you were not able to walk. And you said that DJ Archer and Tom Doherty, your friend who was here, who, by the way, was pacing back and forth. I swear <laughs> he was going to burn something over on the side yeah. because he was going back and forth. He came in, gave you this big hug. How much does it mean to you to have friends like that on tour Man, pushing you and inspiring you? I'm super grateful. I, I, it was a down. It was a really, really low time for me when I hurt myself. And they, they literally checked on, checked on me every day. Uh, Dino, DJ, Tom, Tommy Jones. I mean, I I'm very grateful to have friends like that. Uh, my family, they're, they're always behind me picking me up, but it's always good to have those little extra people saying, dude, just keep going, keep pushing, just wake up every morning, keep going through your day, and, and that's what I did, and I, I can't appreciate them enough. Uh, well, I love them all. Congratulations. You are now a, a PBA Tour now with Tom Thank Dory, you so Randy much, Peterson, Kim Kimberly Pressler, it's Dave Ryan saying so long for now from Tampa. See you tomorrow night for the final leg of the World Series.